Here you go. Let's go to 19. Luke 10, verse 19. We're yet in what we know is until Friday night, the actual end of the Feast of Tabernacles. And this is that time we spend with God to get to know God, to get to know His Word, His presence, what He wants, what He expects of us. And so in, in doing this in a dual fashion tonight, I want to go to Luke 10, chapter, verse 19, because yet I want to dispel our adversary, as we have talked about, his plans and purposes in this month as well. And so when we look at Luke 10, uh, we're going to pick it up. Luke 10, verse 1. It says, After these things, the Lord appointed other seventy also and sent them two and two before his face into every city and place whither he himself would come. Therefore, said he unto them, The harvest truly is great, but the laborers are what? So pray ye therefore, the Lord of the harvest, that he would send forth laborers into his harvest. In essence, somebody got to go get it. The harvest is there. We looked at that, that the harvest is there in John 7. The field is white, it's ripe, it's ready, but ain't no light in the world. Now, we know in context, He's speaking of souls and lost souls. But also, we can broaden this to say everything we looked at uh, Luke the other uh, Sunday when he talks about all things are ready, coming down. God has already prepared. But you got to be willing to work it. You got to be willing to labor, to put forth energy. That word energy is the word ergon. You got to be willing to, be, you got to be willing to exuberate something. You got to have some momentum. Kind of like we talked about Sunday. Come on, you gotta have you gotta move towards right. destiny. Right. Now, looking at this text, destiny is the harvest. Yeah. I need to show up where the harvest is. Right. You see that? He said, but the problem is, it's there, but you won't go get it. Or we find the excuse being made. When he told them to go out and spy the land, they say, yeah, everything you told us is there. But guess what? We see giants. <laughs> and we feel like grasshoppers in their sight. So in essence, what they really said was, I'm going to talk my own self, or I'm going to self-sabotage myself to not get what you told me is there, and I see is there, but I'm going to self-sabotage. It's there, Lord. Everything you promised. The grapes are as big as you said they were. But we also see the giants. Why is it we see the giants bigger than we see God? Why is it that we see the obstacles bigger than we see God? Why do we see it as a greater challenge to believe them over him? No, it should be the opposite way. I should be believing God. Watch this. Here, catch this. It was God that told me it was there. He's not a man that he should not. He proved it when he sent me. He proved it when he revealed it to me. He proved it when he allowed me to have the dream or to have the vision. You do know a dream and a vision is but a glimpse of a coming attraction. No different than at the trailer at the movie theater. God allows you to see, but you got to still watch this here. What God allows you to see is direction for you to move in. Hmm? So he said, pray the Lord of the harvest. He said, the problem is, ain't enough workers in the field to gather in. Look at verse 3. He says, go your way, behold, I send you forth as lambs among wolves. Did you see that? Now, we know in the natural, the lamb don't stand a chance against the wolf. But don't miss this, but God said go. Hmm? In essence, there will be wolves, but don't worry about the wolf. Your concern 
necessarily better be me that sent you. Right. Yes. Go your way. Go do what I asked you to do. And don't worry about the wolf or the demons or the devils because your obedience to your obedience to me is what's gonna guarantee your rewards. Yeah, yeah, huh? The wolf is just watching and playing. Yeah. <laughs> huh? We talk about this, the wealth of the rich is it, you know, or wealth of the sinners is laid up for So where is the wealth at? It's in the sinner's hand, but you don't want to talk to them. Come on, y'all. Huh? Why is it that the why is it that God allows your stuff to be in enemy camp sometimes? Come on. Come on, Huh? Yeah. The enemy ain't greater than God. But what we miss is God telling us the enemy ain't greater than you when you show up. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Huh? It's there, but you got to go. Go your way. Behold, I send you forth as lambs of my word, and then carry neither purse nor scrip nor shoes, and salute no man by the way. In essence, just go. I got you. Don't worry about what you're going to say. Show up. God is saying that if he can just get his people to show up. The harvest is there. Show up. The end of there, he showed up. But because we don't want a battle, because we don't want confrontation, we don't show up. But the enemy said, I'm there. And I will submit to the greater authority. Watch this. But who's the greater authority? The one that sent you. So, drop on down. Let me get to verse 17. It says, and the seventy returned again with joy, saying, Lord, because they finally went. And they said, Lord, even the devils are subject to us. We were intimidated at first. We were in fear. But God, watch this. You didn't send us without power. You didn't send us without authority. You didn't send us without instruction. All we had to do was follow the directions, and guess what? The wolf ain't as bad as we thought he was. The devil ain't as big as we thought he was. That's their testimony right here. Watch this. And the seven returned with joy, saying, Lord, don't miss this, Lord, even the devils Come on, read that for me, y'all. Finish that. Hold it. Hold it. Show you what I've been doing. I ain't, never, ain't talked this in all my time. Watch this here. The devils are subject to. Why did he send the lamb among the wolf? He said, because the devil, the wolf, is subject to you. Not you subject to. I'm going somewhere tonight. When you really understand the power that God has given you, it is to cause things to become subject to us. What's holding up, holding back, what's blocking has to become subject. Look what he said. Look what he said. And they returned saying, Lord, the devils. You see, devil don't want this talked about. Who? The devil's in his got an S on him. So no matter what rate or capacity that devil is operating in, when the power of God shows up, that devil, that demon, that spirit has to become subject. Well, we got to let y'all, we got to let y'all simmer in that. Yeah. Yeah. See, because what we're talking about walking in right now, it's, it's harvest. You got to know. Right. Whatever's in them, whatever show up, yeah. right where your blessing is, you subject to me. Right this here. I'm the owner. Come on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, we already catch me. It makes a difference when the owner show up. Right. That's right. That's right. 
And instead of ran underneath her, I said, when the owner show up, yeah. the one who had the power. Yeah. Huh? He said, even the devils are subject to us. He said, and I, he said unto them, I saw, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give you power. You got power, and it is to tread upon certain scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Now, what am I saying tonight? Whatever is blocking right now, just because you see one, don't mean you don't acquire what's yours. Because I started you off in the harvest. But while you're after your harvest, you might see a spirit. You might see an enemy. Remember, I told you the scripture. The Bible says, Behold, I set before you an open door, but there are many adversaries. So just because there's an adversary, don't mean don't go through the door. But if we miss this one thing tonight, they're subject to us. You're not going to get it. You're not going to make a room. You're going to sit still and you're going to twirl your thumb. And you're going to wait on somebody else to get what God had already told you is yours. Right. Hmm? He says, Behold, I give you power to tread upon certain spoken over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. In essence, what's there can't hurt you. That's right. That's right. Come on. You got to show up as the owner and the rightful heir and say, This belongs to me. Thank you for watching it. Thank you for keeping it intact. Thank you for preserving it till I got here. But I'm here now. You are now relieved of your duties. Hmm? They're subject. Don't miss that word right there. Go home and look it up. They're subject to us. Or they have to come into submission to you. But watch this. We're going back to Sunday's mess. If you don't know how to manifest sonship, how in the world is anything going to come subject to you? The Bible said creation is waiting on the manifestation of the sons of God. Until you manifest who you are in God, then nothing has to come subject to you. Creation. Well, are not demons and devils created spirit? And did not God just say it's subject. But if you don't know you're a son, if you don't, or daughter, if you don't know you an heir, then you will go in there waiting on a command from a demon. That ain't the way we do it, y'all. The harvest is plenteous. Isn't that what that word says? Well, no, it said the harvest is truly great. In your neighbor, that's a whole lot of stuff waiting on you. Hmm? That's a whole lot of things with your name on it. Huh? Come on now. He says, I give you power to tread on service and scorpion, and that's about all the power then. Nothing will hurt you. He says, but notwithstanding in this, that the spirits are subject unto you. He said, but rather rejoice. He said, because your name is written in heaven. He said, because you know me and you have a relationship with me, them being subject to you is a byproduct. Right. That's a byproduct. He says here, but I give you what? Power. I want to focus on this a minute. I give you power. What does power do? Number one, power reveals. Right. <laughs> Write that down. Power me. Why does God give power? So you can have revelation. Because right. until it's revealed in you who you are, guess what? You can't know what a demon is. Right. But the revelation says you are greater than the demon and the devil. Behold, I give you power. I give you authority. I give you the revelation of who you are, whose you are, right. and what belongs to you. Right. That's number one. Whose you are, whose you, who you are, whose you are, and what belongs to you. 
Where's the revelation from? Who my daddy is. My sonship. My right to possess. That's why we want to die. Huh? Because see, watch this, watch this. Don't miss this. When I go in, I got to be confident. I got to be confident when I go in. Yeah. Because if I ain't confident, he'll talk me out of if you be yeah. the son of God. Yeah, right. If you be the handmaid of the Lord. There ain't no will. Right. I, I, I am. And I'm here to get what rightfully belongs to me. You can't tell me it's yours. That's just like when the, when the devil tried to offer Jesus the kingdom. You can get you a thief. You can't offer me what you stole. Don't you know I know the serial number on everything? Did you not see my name engraved on it? Oh, you offered me what? Mine. It don't work like right that. So the first thing that power does is reveal. Second thing I want you to catch of the necessity of the power. When you know who you are, you know who you are and who you are, and when you know what belongs to you, now you have the power to refute. Now I ain't gotta argue with you, but I'm gonna make my point. And if you look at second, uh, Second Timothy three. Let's pick that up right quick, so I can. Some of these, my plan was to run through them, but I'm gonna stop them some just to help you. Second Timothy three. Look at verse sixteen. Here's the refute. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God. What is the power of the reputation? The power of the reputation is no different than what Jesus did. It's real. Huh? You offer me, but it's rich. You're trying to get me to bow down and worship, but it's rich. In essence, you can't refute the enemy when you don't know. So I need not only power to reveal to me who I am, whose I am, and what's mine, but I need the authority and power so I can refute any accusation or any misrepresentation of the word. Y'all y'all follow me tonight. Because when he came to tempt Jesus, he used the word. When the enemy get ready to get you to miss your blessing, he'll make you miss your blessing on a misquoted scripture. Huh? Okay, Psalm 91. If you don't really know Psalms 91, he tried to get Jesus to kill himself. Watch this. On Psalm 91. Yeah. Get this, y'all. He tried to get Jesus jump off the cliff. Suicide. Right. The angels will catch you. And you just act a fool and just drop yourself off there. You know nothing. Well, you ain't no bird. You can't fly. Sitting there listening to R. Kelly. I believe I can fly. No, you can't. Not in this incident. Huh? You can't do it. Hold your horses. This devil trying to trick me into suicide. What did he use? Scripture. Now watch this, watch this, don't miss this tonight. The very thing God gave you to refute him with, he turned his back on you. And in your ignorance of scripture. See, that's why we can't all we are stuck. Show ourselves the truth. But you gotta know this. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and it's profitable. But in being profitable, you gotta make corrections. That's what I tell you all the time. Whenever you get to a stage, God can't correct you, or leadership can't correct you, it's over with. George, you know everything. But in the order and the authority of God, God says, whenever I handle anything, I handle it on the authority of the word. Right, right. Hmm? We go into the book. 
See, that way it ain't your opinion, their opinion, this doctrine, that doctrine. What the book says. Yeah, yeah. hmm? That means you say, okay, yes, I'm asking that. Who your daddy is now? Because you remember what they told, told you? He said, they're talking about, well, we be Abraham. See, he said, well, if you was Abraham's child, you wouldn't seek to kill me. Y'all, did y'all catch that? That's $100,000. I'm going to go and get your hands up for free tonight. Huh? If you know who your dad is, and if I know who your dad is, I ain't got to deal with you. I talk to your dad. Amen. Okay, y'all ain't. Y'all was all good children. Huh? Did anybody ever, when you were long, tell you, I'm going to tell your mom on you? Yeah. What they tell you, I know your mom. I ain't got a fool with you. I call Maddie. And I thought I tell Betty what you down here doing. <laughs> and no, and before I get to the house, Betty at the door <laughs> with a shoe, a comb, or iron, or whatever. <laughs> Boy, you down there embarrassing me. What you that? I ain't got food with you. I just ain't down. And he will make the necessary corrections. Hmm? So we see now that this power is not only for us to have revelation and not, but it's also for us to be able to stand our ground or to refute intelligently. See, y'all gotta understand, the enemy don't really sit there and argue with you. He just see, he tests your knowledge. Right. That's it. That's it right Let's see if you really been in school. Right. Let's see if you really been paying attention. When you in Bible study, pay attention when you sleep. All the notes you got in the book, have you ever really looked out in real good? Because here's your test. My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. So when the enemy gets ready to whoop you, and we always talked about this, the battleground is the mind. Right. If he can get you to say what God said ain't true. It's over with. Okay, go back to Genesis when he came in. What did God say? You always want to plant out. What did God say? Did God say you couldn't? What? He always had to plant a seed. But that's why you got to study. You got to know. Go to Luke 11. Luke 8. Ooh, Lord. Is helping you tonight? Because I need you to get your heart, but I need you to know you got to deal with some devils to get it. Hmm? Yes, the harvest is there. It's right. It's plenty. It's great. But there's a demon. Look at Luke 8. Somebody read. Let's see. Pick up 11, 12, and 13. <clears throat> Luke 8. Now the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. Those by the wayside are they that hear. Then cometh the devil and taketh away the word out of their heart, lest they should be, lest they should believe and be saved. Okay. They on the rock are they, which when they hear receive the word with joy, and these have no root, which for a while believe and in time of temptation fall away. Okay. What are we dealing with here? God says, I give you power or word to what? Reproduce. So we're going to reveal, we're going to refute, but guess what? We get ready to duplicate this because everything God does is in seed form. He duplicates everything in seed form. As long as the earth remains, there's going to be seed time and what? Harvest. The future of the next is in the seed. Are you catching that? The future of the next apple is in the seed that's in this apple. Right. Right. You don't get a harvest without a seed. Right. 
Huh? So God said, but you gotta understand, you need this understanding because what I'm giving you is so you can reproduce. You can't write this, let me say it another way. You can't leave that on the table. Hmm? You can't leave that on the table. You can't just mishandle. The Bible talks about mishandling the word of God with crafty God. You can't do that. This is the seed. This is the seed form. This is God's word. And you got to use it strategically. You got to swirl this against the enemy. Is that making sense? Go to 1 Peter. Tell your name, I'm going to get mine. If you walk up in there. Go up in there boldly and confidently. Sir, why are you here? I come to get what's mine. Right. Hmm? You know how you gotta do it. You gotta, you gotta understand. You got to have an air of confidence. If you sit there with your hands shaking and knees knocking the can on it, you're like, what you come for? You need a doctor. You need some medicine. You got to shake your alcoholic or something. What's going on? That ain't, you ain't confident. The Bible says, praise God. This is therefore the confidence we have in Him. I got enough confidence to ask for it. I better have enough confidence to go get it. Mm -hmm. Tell your neighbor, ain't taking no for an answer. Woo, Lord help us. Look at uh, 1 Peter 2. Take me to 8. Oh, Lord, we have to read all of it. Take it from 18 to 25. Bye-bye. Servants, be subject to your masters with all fear, not only to the good, good and gentle, but also to the fraud. For this is thankworthy if a man for a conscience toward God endure grief, suffering wrongfully, for what glory is it if when you be if when you be buffered for your faults you shall take it patiently? But if when you do well and suffer for it, you take it patiently, this is acceptable with God. For even hereunto were you called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps. Who did no sin, neither was guile found in, in his mouth. Who, when he was reve revealed, reveled, reveled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judges righteously. Who his own self bare our sins in his own body on the tree that we, being dead to sin, should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed. For ye were as sheep going astray, but are now returned unto the shepherd and bishop of your souls. Here's the point. Power comes to redirect you. See, you will need God, but you ain't going to be able to get it without God. Jesus said, man, this, there were many times things came. He said, when they were, when, when I was revived, don't you think I wanted to go back at them? Right. He said, but you got to overcome one spirit with the opposite spirit. You can't, this ain't get like me. How many of you play get like me when we, y'all don't know about like that. Y'all ain't used to gamble with me. You, you know about, you know about get like me. Uh, come on. Oh, oh, let me stop. Okay. So <laughs> you're so you might say, yeah, another night, baby. But anyway, we ain't playing kids like me. Huh? Y'all look at me like I'm playing. So anyway, if we're doing corners, whatever. If I throw it in and hit him and cup the head up, you got to throw it in and hit his head. If his head is yours, get like me. But if you can't get like me, that's mine. And we ain't going to fight about it. 
Because she played. Huh? But he tells you, let me go back to the story. So here you gotta understand. Jesus says, listen, power has to redirect you when you are off course. That's right. That's right. Amen. Because if you go into this thing, watch this, trying to naturally fight this, when I've already called this to be subject to you, right. you're gonna miss it. That's right. And I'm trying to make sure you don't miss because you don't miss handle what's in front of you. Woo! See, there's a whole lot to when he said, I give you power. Right. That power is doing so much, watch this, that power is doing so much in you. See, because a lot of times, we look at power only as what it's doing against the enemy. What's it doing in you? It's like I told you Sunday. Ain't no way to come into Jesus and don't change. Right. I, I'm always amazed that folks say they in Jesus, but they ain't changed. Huh? How you in the word, but there's no correction. It don't work like that. So God says, I've given you power, and here's what the power will do against your enemy, but it's also doing something in you. It's preparing you, watch this, to be able to handle what you're about to come into. Right. Yeah. And that power to redirect is also, because you know some folks get money in their hands, they become fools. Yeah. Hmm? Yeah. They said money, only thing money do is bring out what's already. Yeah. Hmm? It brings out what's in you. But you gotta have some in you. That's what the Bible said. You can't worship God and mammon. Yes, You're gonna love one and hate the other, hate one and this. Just... But God says, when I give you this power, when I give you this word, when I put this anointing on you to go get that harvest, you are not gonna be redirected because of what you get. You're not gonna be redirected because of what you see. You're gonna hold true and hold fast. Is any of this making sense to you? Okay. I'm going to give you go to Hebrews 11. He read one, one more. Hebrews 11. And I ain't going gonna, gonna to read all of them. We're going straight to verse 6. Hebrews 11, go to verse 6. Hebrews 11, verse 6. What's it say? But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. What's that power going to do? It's going to get you the reward. Right. What's the reward? It's the heart. It's the harvest. Why? But they came back and said, Lord, the demons are subject to us. These folks got saved. These folks got healed. These folks got delivered. This stuff is actually working in me. So guess what? I've been rewarded. Yeah. Don't miss it. We back to another teaching from last week sometime. Here's why my faith is at work. Receiving the end of my faith. To receive the end of my faith is to be rewarded. Huh? Man, I've got this thing. It's actually here. It came to pass. Right. It didn't do it without the power. So I need the power. But I gotta understand that there's a duality of the purpose of the power is doing something in me at the same time is eliminating all my enemies. Watch this. Why eliminate all your enemies and then be your own worst enemy? That's why the Bible says the word is quick, power, and sharp as a it's cut going in, but it's cutting coming out. It's making you whole. 
The word is quick, power, shove it into it. It is a decider. Now watch this. O M it takes. You divide to conquer. God says, I'm going to let this word divide so you don't be conquered. So by thought, by discernment, you see your real enemy. And you don't just walk up to him and say, oh, here, you're my weapon here, huh? Devil is alive. Why would I give you my sword? That's why in the olden days, when the kings were fighting, they would do two things to a king to disable him. Cut off his thumb and cut off his toes, big toes. How I many you know, if you take away the thumb, how can you hold the sword? Right. You can't fight me if you don't have the thumb. Right. You can't fight me if you don't have nothing to grip your weapon with. Bro, how hard is it to hold a gun without a thumb? You need your thumb. So what the enemy used to do, he didn't cut off one just because you might be ambidextrous. You might be just as good with your left as you are with your right. So what we gonna do? Cut off. Because I don't want you to go from one hand I want you crippled. Now, what was the purpose of cutting the toes off? Balance. If you can't hold a sword and you have no balance, I'm going to easily knock you down. It was a strategy. That's how the enemy won against a lot of fight. And they would take the king and cripple him. Because he couldn't hold a sword. He couldn't keep his balance. He could not, watch the that's good, thank you, Lord. He couldn't maintain his position. Huh? Ooh, this is real good. Watch this, watch this. So when you get in a position, God says you better know how to maintain it. You can mess around with that, that devil get close enough for you to cut your thumbs and toes off, and you'll be out of spot. Which stuff brings me to a whole other message, but I ain't going to go into tonight. But if you look at you, he said, that's why you got to contend for the faith. Right. That's why you got to fight for it. Huh? Don't let God put you there and you put yourself out. Watch this. Because you ain't got no thumb. Well, what's the thumb? The apostle. Uh -huh. Then you got the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, the teacher. Don't lose your apostle. Don't lose that foundation. Don't lose that truth in the word. Don't lose what has the ability to touch everything. Even when, even when you ball a fist, what's covering the other fingers? talks about the doctrine of the apostles and the prophets, the foundational teachings, how to go to war, how to get the harvest, how to keep the harvest, how to maintain the position. Glory to God. 